G'day folks and welcome to another episode of The Breakdown brought to you by Newstead Brewing where we're here filming today. My name is Brennan Source Hotel from Queensland Rugby and joining me as always is commentary regular Jay Boy Staunton and our special guest today, Norton Reds fly half, Matty McGarn. How are we gents? Live the drink, Source. Awesome, mate. Really good. All right now, Matty, first time on The Breakdown, mate, and your first season in Queensland Premier Rugby, mate. How are you enjoying running around with the Eagles at the moment? Yeah, it's been going good. It's been uh, challenging at times. Uh, haven't got some results that we wanted to, but it's, it's good to to get a feeling of, of Brisbane club rugby. Um, just really enjoying the camaraderie and, and how seriously they take it here in Brisbane. And uh, I think it's, it's really good what it means to them and, and, and they hold it in very high regard. And mate, you've played in some tough games already. You guys got the win over UQ, played brothers at brothers and obviously the brethren are red hot this year. What's been uh, sort of your toughest game so far? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say brothers. Uh, I think with the, with the three twenties boys, they're kind of leading that pack, that forward pack. Um, and, and, and I think, they, as I was talking about before, that camaraderie, I think they've got a really good club culture there. Um, it's noticeable by the fans and also the playing group. Uh, they take a lot of pride in, in their club, uh, like most other clubs, but it's, it's definitely going there and, and trying to win was, was really tough and, and we struggled that day. So we'll kick things off with our first game from round seven, North v Easts. Now, Last week on the breakdown, I said I'd eat my hat if Norse got the better of Easts and... How'd that go, Sauce? Yeah. What was the score? A lot to not much. So, I'm a man of my word. You know, Matty, you were messaging me within half an hour Correct. of the game, mate, getting stuck in, saying, I hope you got your hat ready. You weren't alone. I copped it from Duncan. <laughs> I copped it from Chido. I had the club president, the junior president, the GM all to me on Sunday. So I've gone away, prepped something for today. It's a special, uh, it's a North's oh, nice. nacho hat. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's a hat, it's on my head. And, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see what it's like. I went hard baking That's last good. night. Any good? I'm not a baker. <laughs> Give me a taste there. Not I've eaten worse hats. <laughs> How's that for content? So it was a relatively close clash right up until sort of the finals of 20 or so, Matty, when you guys ran away with it. Um, talk us through the match, mate, and what sort of clicked well for you guys. Yeah, I think we, I think we scored off the first line out of the game and, and kind of got a bit of confidence from that. Uh, obviously coming off the tough week before that uh, against Jeeps. Um, and then it just kind of... East, I think, woke them up a little bit. They might have been a bit, bit sleepy in the warm-up and, and we kind of just got into an arm wrestle for the kind of first 40 minutes. Um, we snuck one in just before half-time. Uh, they kicked a couple of penalties and, and, and kind of pulled their way back. Um, and it was, a, it was a lot of to-and-froing. We made a few mistakes, but, yeah, up until that 20th minute mark, it was, it was really close. And uh, Duncan Payawa back, how big of an impact does he have, mate, when he lines up at 12 for you blokes? Oh, he's massive. Um, not just uh, what he does on the field, but I think what he brings in presence, uh, I think is huge. And we were talking about it before, just when, when the boys know that Duncan's playing this weekend, they, they kind of grow an extra arm and a leg and, and kind of get that self-confidence right up. And, and it showed out there, he was awesome. He played 80 minutes, he hasn't played. He sat on the bench a couple of times, hasn't really played. So even he was itching to get out uh, uh, on the field and, and play some footy and it, and it certainly showed on the weekend. And credit to you blokes, mate. You guys played awesome, but obviously East had a couple of really key guys out for this game, which I didn't know about before I made my bet. Um, Jay, talk us through who the Tigers were missing, mate, and probably how much of an impact that had for them. Yeah, they were missing both their centres, Gordo and Landon Hayes, and then also Senna Udu, who's been one of the best number eights in the competition. And then I think early on as well, Carter Rosane and, and uh, Sam Richards went mm -hmm. down. So you've lost five of your best and most experienced players before kickoff or just after kickoff, it's always going to be hard. So, I mean, they've got depth there at Tigerland, but I think up against the north side that was really clicking, you got Matty Nagan, Duncan Payawa, and Connor Chitlin in the midfield. You know, it's always going to be a tough day out, especially with those guys out. Right, and I suppose to finish on this match, what the weekend probably shows is that clubs can't take north lightly. If you go to Hugh Courtney thinking that it's going to be an easy day out, Matty and the guys could sting you. 
Hell yeah. It's going to be really big for clubs to make sure that they don't switch off when they come up against Norths. Last year, we saw um, a lot of teams were right up in the fight, even though they might have been down the bottom of the ladder. And I think that's going to be the same again this year. We've seen Norths take some teams down. We've seen Sunnybank give teams a run. I mean, Bonder and Brady Outfit, they're running in eighth right now. So I don't think anyone can take any team lightly, be it Chiefs Brothers or any of those top teams. So I, I think if they do that, it's going to be a long day um, on the field for them. So moving on to our second match from round seven, West versus Bond of The doggies got up here 40 to 27. Jade, talk us through this one. Uh, pretty close contest. It only got uh, blown out there at the end when Jerry Lynch got that intercept try. Um, but to be brutally honest, I say that a lot, but being brutally honest, this was Bond's opportunity. West were massively under the gun, massively understaffed, and it's looking pretty bad for them. But we've got to remember last year, they made it within one or two points of making the top four after going 0-6. They're now one and five. So they're not in the best position. They're down their best attack and player in Corbin Keenan. But this was do or die for both sides. And the Dolphins came out on top. And it's not like Bond have been playing bad footy, which is sort of the hard part. But I mean, with the record like one for five, when you know they have been really close in matches, this is probably actually their biggest deficit and a loss. Like, how do you bounce back from that one, Maddie, when you're really up against the wall, sort of a, sort of a third of the way through the season? Yeah, it is a tough one. Obviously, you, you do all the work in your preseason to to give yourself the best opportunity, and and it's not the greatest, uh, and you're going one in five. But you know, is it the old adage is you're only as good as your last game, and I think. It's, it's when your back's against the wall is when you see how good a team or, or your club is, is really about. And, and I think probably this weekend, you, you'll definitely see a, a fighting Bond side out there that's, that's pretty much, we could say, playing for their season. And big news out of Bond this week, um, since the weekend, the head coach, Brad Harris, for this year. Obviously, he was with the Fiji and Drua during the NRC last year. He's now taken a role with them. Um, for the Rugby World Cup. So he's actually off to Fiji on Sunday. So Grant Anderson, who was the head coach last year, is stepping back into the head coach role, having been an assistant so far. But obviously that's a real challenge for these guys to overcome. It is, but I don't see it being too much of a hindrance. Brad Harris is a great coach, but Ando is a very good coach too, as you said. Took him to fifth last year. So he can coach. Um, that reshuffle, who knows how it affects teams. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Um, it's a bit of a flip of a coin, but you know, getting Ando to come back in that position, I don't think it's going to be too much of a hindrance on them. They're just going to make sure that it doesn't actually take their mind off the fact that they've got to start kicking their season around. So moving on to our third match from round seven, GPS versus Sunnybank. Probably a narrow scoreline than what you'd think as we headed into the game. So Jeeps secure the win, 33-21, but that's probably the best performance we've seen out of the Dragons so far, Jake. 100% agree fully. Um, the Dragons were very good on the weekend. Jeeps, they had a bit of a reshuffle. I think LV was playing a few guys out of position, a few new guys, I think. Rested Gormo, bringing him off the bench. Um, but still, there was a big shift from the forwards at Sunnybank. Something that's really been letting them down all year is their starch up front. But at scrum time and set piece, they really switched on. And you could see the difference. When their forward pack is actually in the fight, their back line gets unleashed. And Hayden Sargent and the rest of those guys out there can really put you to the sword. And, Matty, you've already played Jeeps and Sunnybank this year. Um, obviously, that match against Jeeps, you guys played pretty well, mate. But that forward pack, when they're a full strength, is pretty impressive, aren't they? Yeah, exactly right, I think. Um sitting them behind them and just once they get a momentum on it's, it's very hard to stop and and by the sounds of it um Sunnybank forwards played really well on the weekend um and as you said gave a real hot crack but yeah i think jeeps is, is probably the best uh if not second best probably forward pack that uh, that i've played against in the comp at the moment and um a couple of interesting changes there as well mate troy simpkin he's been at jeeps for a long time he got his start and that was because uh Miley Noamo, he was down in, in Canberra playing for Brumby's Runners. So it could be interesting to see what uh, what comes of that in the coming weeks. Yeah, it was a weird one there. I mean, losing someone of his calibre is massive. But I rate Troy Simpkin. He's got a big motor um, for a hooker. So I don't think he's as abrasive as what you've got with Noamo and obviously with Freeney last year. But he's a very well-rounded player. Reminds me a bit of uh, uh, Cody Blackers from North. Mm -hmm. You know, can do a bit of everything really well. So if he gets given his opportunity, I think he could do um, very well towards back end of the season. 
And uh, Jeep are obviously wearing a special jersey on the weekend. Jay, tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, so it's to support a couple of charities. Obviously, they've got uh, Rod McDonald House that they've had a long time partnership with, but there's also another one, Pencare. So they help uh, those around Australia um, struggling with pancreatic cancer. Um, and a, a very good clubman from uh, Jeeves is uh, uh, going through it at the moment. Julia Jeffress is one of the nicest blokes you'll ever meet. Um, and the Jeffress family are, are synonymous with Ashgrove and Chiefs Rugby. So it's good to see them getting around it and supporting one of their own. So, you know, it's it's really uh, touching to see them wear those jerseys, which I think is a, is a really great thing. So moving on to our fourth game was the match of the round, Brothers v UQ. The Brethren got up in the end 48 to 20, but it really was a tale of two halves, Jay. Very much so. Uh, very close at half time. Not what I was expecting. Uni really showed up mm. and, and outpaced Brothers. Really made them look like statues uh, in that first half, but in the second half, Ruben Wall just absolutely unleashed. I think he picked up a brace, Seb Wilman started chopping up, and they just looked legit. And it's guys like Paddy James and Rowan Seifeloy, who we know are great players, that seem to just be really underplaying their hand. They really set up their outside backs to make them look like superstars. And you know, those two are just running the shows blindly there at 10 and 12. So, Jay, you mentioned Seb Wildman there, mate. Uh, obviously, had a cracking game. Matty, you've been training with him at the Reds this year and in pre-season as well. What have you made of uh, Seb's impact at Brothers, mate? What do you reckon he brings to that outfit? Well, firstly, I think he's, he just brings a, a bit of... Uh, would you like to say a bit of X Factor probably to that back line? They've got some really good steady heads out there, but I think what Sebi brings is is that bit of X Factor. And, and when he kicks to the outside and gets his fend up, he's he's pretty hard to stop. And and I knew when we played played brothers, I was, I was making sure that our centers were up early on him, cutting off that outside to to kind of shut him down. But yeah, at trainings when he when he gets to full flight and, and really uses physicality, I think he's he's really good. And we talk about who impressed us with brothers, but who stood out for you for UQ on the weekend, mate? Uh, I'd have to say Yoss Van Eden was really good. That was his best game at halfback for the students since coming over from the Doggies last year. Um, and he started to form a really good partnership with Jimmy Del Gleish. Uh, but for mine, Adam Korchik. It can go missing on occasion when he's got ball in hand or when he has to step up and dig. You can see what he can really do, but I think he can go missing. On the weekend, he clearly put his hand up wanted to do those extras, and that was his best game I've seen him play for the shoots ever. Yeah, mate, I agree. I thought Korchik had an awesome game. The other fellow that I was actually really impressed with was Fergus Lillycrap. Um, obviously, he comes from good lineage. He's Cameron Lillycrap's son. Matty had known him from running water around at training. But, uh, you know... Very averagely, too, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, young fella. He got stuck in, um, did the hard work in tight, and, you know, that created opportunities for the backs out wide. So, you know, hats off to the Red Heavies. They played a good game, and, and hopefully that's an indication of their comeback. I think, um, you know, if they can keep building on a performance like that... Um, they can potentially still press for the top four towards the back end of the season. Agreed. So moving on to the round eight matches this weekend, it's going to be an absolute ripper weekend of footy. Jay, we've got a top of the table clash between the Gallopers and the Brethren over at Yoku Road. This one's going to be heaving. Absolutely pumping. Glue Factory will be going off. I know for a fact that there's a bus party that's going on at um, Yoku Road this weekend. It's old boys day. It's top two teams in the competition. This will be the go. And when you get a sniff of a, a game of footy like that, mate, with the raucous crowd, you can't help but get your camera out. Oh, mate, I'll be down there interviewing punters. I'll probably try to do a PG version. <laughs> and then the other version, Direct which uh, we'll, yeah, we'll have to um, keep behind closed doors because I think it's going to be absolutely nuts. This, this should have several thousand people there going absolutely mental. Freeney, please keep your clothes on. <laughs> All right, and then we got West v Souths at Sylvan Road. Um, obviously, probably a pretty key game for these guys, Matty, is two sides. Both are going to get a little bit of ascendancy and push back towards the top of the ladder. Yeah, I think so. I haven't had much to do with West, but there's a couple of boys in Souths, obviously, Teddy Teller and um, Scotty Malalua that are with us at the Reds. Um, so then in that side, controlling that side, I think Souths are, are looking to, to obviously get, a, get another win on under their belt, should I say. Um, but I think I'm going to tip South in this one. 
um, on the back of, I think, yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I think I've made some enemies here at the table, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go south here. I'm gonna back my, my friends, my fellow teammates, Scotty and Teddy to upset. It'll be close though, I'll, I'll give you that, it'll be close. I'll say, oh, thanks. Scotty Malalua to kick the winning field goal. Penalty yeah, kick. I say Scotty Malalua to miss the winning field goal <laughs> and <more> penalty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, <laughs> and your Eagles, Matty, they're heading down to Bond this weekend, mate. Um, you know, we spoke about this earlier. Bond obviously going to be looking to bounce back after a hard week, but you're not going to be lining up for the Eagles this week, mate. Um, what's happening with you on Saturday? Yeah, well, I've been caught up to the big boys, so, um, yeah, getting the first start there with the Reds, so pretty excited about that. Unfortunately, yeah, we'll be able to play for Norse, um, but, yeah, really, really looking forward to, to Saturday's game. All right, well, congratulations, Matty. We're all stoked for you here, mate. You. Um, but obviously, you know, with you out, mate, what does that mean for the Norse boys in terms of that reshuffle of the back line, mate? Probably gives, uh, you know, young young Prado a chance to step back into that 10 role. Yeah, I think he'll he'll go to 10 and and kind of, uh, well, you still got Connor there in that centre that'll give you some go for Bookie on the wing. Um, but I know that, that um, Bond, as we talked about before, uh, are really trying to save their season, so it could be a... A long road trip down down to Bond, but I'm going to back the boys uh, over over Bond on the weekend. All right, and and East v Sunnybank um, is our match of the round this week over at Tigerland. Um, obviously, there's a fair bit of importance behind this one, um, with the boys playing for the Rectoral Cup. Talk us through a little bit about this one, Jay, and you know, I suppose the meaning behind this game. Well, the, uh, Rick Tyrrell um, played for both Sunnybank and East, former Queensland Reds forward, um, tragically uh, passed away. Uh, due to mental illness, and, and a few of his mates uh, wanted to do something to be able to support those that are dealing with mental illness um, in uh, rugby in Queensland. So they've created Rugby Unite, which is a really, really good program to try and get um, you know pe people just more aware of, of how to deal with mental illness. Um, and, and it is something that is rather prevalent, not just in rugby, but uh, in, in uh, society as a whole. So it's really good that they are doing this. And... Um, you know, to be able to have guys like Michael Chettle and, and co, friends of Rick Tyrrell, see so many people support such a good cause is really touching. Um, and I think we've commentated these games every single year over the last few years and they are always belters. They, they, both teams are always right up for this one, so I don't see it being any different this year. Yeah, and, and adding to Rick's legacy, we've announced this week that Queensland Rugby Union, we're partnering with the State Government and Rugby Unite and um, what the team's going to be doing is rolling out mental health first aid training throughout all of Queensland's 240 plus clubs around the state over the next three years, which which will be massive. Um, you know, Matty, mate, you've obviously been around professional sport for a long time, mate. There's plenty of pressures and some of that that come from different angles. Um, how do you, how important do you reckon this mental health first aid training could be, um, you know, within the Premier Rugby Comp and, and the wider community? Yeah, I think it's massive, and, uh, and I think it's a great initiative. Um, obviously, yeah, in, in sport, but as you talked about before, in life in general, I've had, you know, a good friend that I've played with um, that has suffered from mental health, and um, and I think it's it's massive. And just recently, in in New Zealand, a, a, a prominent New Zealand actor, Paul Mangasiva, obviously um, tragically passed away as well. So it's I think it's really awesome, and the more awareness we can bring to to mental health issues, and and just asking your friends, look, are you right? Like you know, like everyone needs you, and making making them feel a bit special. I think it's awesome, and as I said, a great initiative by, by QIU. And hats off to the boys at Rugby Unite for, you know, kick-starting this those five years ago and really looking forward to what's going to be a good game of footy, but also just a special occasion at, at Tigerland this weekend. All right, folks, that's it for this week's episode of The Breakdown. Thanks for joining me, Jay and Matty. You love it, Sauce. No worries, bro. As always, folks, make sure you get out and support your Queensland Premier Rugby Club this weekend. But if you can't make it to a match, we've got you covered with all four games streamed live and free via redsrugby.com.au. Also, don't forget, we've got the Reds taking on the Tars here at Suncorp Stadium on Saturday night. It's going to be an absolute belter of an interstate clash. So get out and support the Queensland side as well. In the meantime, stay tuned for more Premier Rugby content via the Facebook page. Up the Reds! Ha, ha, ha.